Okay, let's look at some applications here now for these types of uh, integrals. This is a price demand application. The market research department for a department store has determined that for a particular store, the marginal price, now the marginal, remember, is the derivative of price, uh, at x twos per week of a brand of toothpaste is given by this function, negative 0.015e to the negative 0.01x. So it says find the price demand equation P of X if the weekly demand uh, is X equal 50 when the price is 235. So now um, let's see if we can find um, the price demand equation. Now the price demand equation is the price function. So that's what we're looking for. Well we're given the derivative of, of the price function. So to get price, we simply need to integrate this function. Okay, so let's take a look at this function. So we're going to integrate this function here so that we can get the price function. So now um, I'm going to factor the negative 0.015 out. And then remember I showed you a little property earlier that says if you integrate e to the ax dx, that's actually 1 over a e to the x plus a constant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, then this is, I have the negative 0.015 as a factor, but when I integrate this, I'm going to get 1 over negative 0.01. So I'm actually going to have negative 0.015 over negative 0.01 uh, e to the negative 0.01x plus a constant. And that's actually, if you divide that out, you're going to get 1.5 e to the negative 0.01x plus the constant. Now, normally we can't determine the constant, unless, of course, we have additional information. And that's what we have here. We know here that if x is 50, the price is 235. So all I have to do now is plug in 50 for x and set the price equal to 235. Now remember this is the price function. So if we plug in 50 for x, then that price function should equal 235. Well, when I grabbed my handy dandy calculator, I figured out what, what is uh, 1.5, let's see, uh, or what is 1.5e to the negative 0.01 times 50. What I did is I subtracted that and then I figured out what that was. Then I subtracted it from 235 here. So you can see I just subtracted it. And it must have been around, let's see, 91 cents. So this must have been around 0.91 because when I took it away from 235, I got the constant is $1.44 or 1.44. So now I can put that constant back into my price function. And now I have a model for my price demand function. So I have now my price demand model. And the second question says find the demand if the price is $1.89. Well now that I have the model I can set my price equal to $1.89 and then just solve this for X to get the demand. So let's say I'll subtract $1.44 from both sides and I'll get 40, 45, 0.45. And then I'll divide 1.5 into both sides to isolate my e to the negative 0.01x. And then I'll take the log of both sides. And then when you take the log of e to a power, the natural log of e to a power is just the power. So then I'll get a negative 0.01x equals natural log of 0.3. And then divide by negative 0.01 to get x. And x turns out to be about 120 tubes. There you go. So there's your solution for that one. Well, in statistics, we talk about something called the normal probability distribution. And what we might be looking for in that case is we want to find the probability that, say, an event will fall within a specific range. And so what this function looks like is it looks like a bell curve. And so what's interesting is if you, if you, we're given, say, a standard deviation and a mean. So if you were given the normal distribution with a mean and a standard deviation, you could actually uh, look up a table and let's say you wanted to find the area here, a particular area under this. 
So let's say you wanted to find the area, say, from here from 200 over to 220 under this curve. Well, we teach our, our statistics students to calculate what's called a z-score, and then they can go look in a table and find the area defined by that particular z-score. But if you ever wonder where those z-scores come from, they actually come from integrating this function. Now, your professor, I'm sure, is not going to have you do this, but I just wanted to show you. Uh, for instance, if you, if you know that you have, say, a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 10, then the actual probability distribution function would be this particular function. So what you could do is if you wanted to know the area under that curve from say 200 to 220, if you knew how to integrate uh, this particular function, which we won't worry about trying to do that, but I just want you to see that you can, you can integrate this function and it will give you the area which is about 0.475 uh, it'll give you this area between 200 and 220. So if you're ever looking at the, the Z table, what I call the Z table, where you're trying to find areas under the normal curve, then those values actually come from um, somebody that solved a bunch of integrals that's determined what those values are. Now what's interesting about this particular function here is this is a function where um, this is a function where the mean is zero and the standard deviation would be one. And what's interesting is if you found the second derivative of this, which we won't worry about doing, but if you want to, you can figure it out. If you find the second derivative of that function, you'll find that you get critical numbers at plus or minus one for the second well for the second derivative. And so negative 1 would be probably right here, and plus 1 would be probably right here. And you can see the concavity change from concave up to concave down, then back to concave up. So anyway, I just thought that might be interesting for you to look at. Let's look at a logistic growth model. Consider the population of white-tailed deer in a certain state. The Department of Game and Wildlife sets guidelines for hunting and fishing in the state, and it's reported that an estimate of 900,000 deer prior to the hunting season of 2004. Suppose the deer population that has plenty to eat and is not hunted by humans or other predators will double every five years. Then the exponential growth model would follow some model like this where P0 is the initial population of 900,000. And since the population doubles every five years, we know when T is five, P will grow to 1.8 million. So from that information, I can plug in 1.8 million and 5 for t, and I can solve for this constant. So if you divide 900,000 into 1.8 million, you get 2 equals e to the 5k, and then take logs, and you get natural log of 2 is equal to 5k, and then k would be natural log of 2 over 5, which would be 0.1386. So the com completed model would be 900,000 e to the 0.1386. Uh, t, I'm sorry, 900,000 e to the point 1386t. So that would allow you to determine the population at any point uh, in time. But this assumes we have plentiful food supply and that the population grows exponentially. But that only makes sense in the short term. Consider in the longer term that the maximum deer can be sustained is 2.7 million. Well, this might take a lot of what's called a logistic growth model like this. So if t equals 0, um, then you get 1 plus 2 down here into 2.7 million, which gives you 900,000. And since we know that p is 1.8 million when t is 5, using this model, we can solve for the k. Now this is a little more difficult, but um, you can so I'll just let you solve for this, but you can use some algebra to get 1 plus t 2e to the 5k, equals 2.7 million over 1.8 million, which is actually 1.5. And then you get 2e to the 5k is 0.5. And then e to the 5k would be 0.25. And then you could take natural log of both sides and get 5k is equal to natural log of 0.25. Finally, you get k is natural log of 0.25 over 5, which is this number. 
And so now our natural uh, logistic model would be 2.7 million over 1 plus 2 e to the negative 0.2773t. That t is kind of hidden there. But you get that. And so now what's interesting is as t goes to infinity, this function will actually go to 2.7 million. And if you wanted to estimate the population, say after 20 years, you could just plug 20 in for t and then grab your calculator and figure out the population. Now, if you wanted to find the rate the population is changing at 20 years, you would actually have to find the derivative, and I'll leave that up to you to do. You can use the quotient rule, find the derivative, and then evaluate the derivative at 20, and you'll find the, the rate of the deer is changing at a little over 5,700 deer per year at 20 years. Um, here's a couple more. Um, go ahead and freeze the video and, and read this radioactive decay problem. This is really more of an algebra problem than it is a, uh, a calculus problem. So basically here you're given some information and so you're able to solve for the constant k and then you can complete the model and then um, you can answer the questions by plugging in a hundred. I think that's supposed to be a hundred right there. The answer's right though. So you actually get 20 e to the negative 0.099 t and then if you replace t with 100 you'll get 0.001k for the for the final answer for the that it's asking. Um, here's a compound interest problem and again this is more of a algebra problem but it just shows you this is the compound interest formula so if money is compounded periodically like in this case it's compounded quarterly then n would be 4 for 12 years you're putting in a principal of 2000 at a rate of 0 0.075 if you plug that into your calculator into this formula you get 48 78 38 and then if you wanted to know when this account would equal 10,000 then you would put 10,000 in for the amount and then 2,000 still for the principal but you're going to solve for t so you would actually have to isolate this exponential expression and then take logs of both sides and then you'd have to use your log property here so you'd get 4t times this log is equal to natural log of 5 and then you would have to divide 4 times the natural log of this into natural log of 5 to get t and you get 21.7 years and then here's one for continuous compounding um, so if it's continuously compounded you get 2000 times 0 0.075 to the 10 for 10 years uh, and then uh, that turned out to be four thousand two hundred thirty four dollars and then if you want to know how long it'll take it to grow to ten thousand you just take that same formula replace the amount with ten thousand p is the principal two thousand and then e to the 0 0.075 t and then solve that for t first you divide both sides by two thousand then you take the log of both sides and you get natural log of 5 is equal to 0.075t and then just divide 0.075 into natural log of 5 and you'll see it's 21.5 years. So it's going to be a little bit shorter than it was in the previous example because um, we're con doing continuous compounding here. And, and then in the previous example we were doing, I think, quarterly compounding. Okay, now let me just warn you, these, like I said, these were just some algebra problems. But if you're ever asked for what rate something is changing, um, like if I wanted to know the rate of change, um, what I would need to do is find the derivative of the function. So based on the, the variable here. So for example, if, if I had 2000 e to the 0.075t here, and I wanted to know the rate the money's changing, I'd have to take the derivative of that with respect to t and then plug in for say whatever year we're asking when the rate's changing. So if it's at 10 years then I'd plug in 10 and that would tell me the rate the money's changing at 10 years. Well that's pretty much all we've got on exponential and log functions. So finally we finished uh, this section which is really two sections that I, I kind of combined together.